Hey guys, Rob from the Off Grid Tiny House. Um, so, I haven't been to the tiny house for quite a while. Um, uh, just some stuff going on. But, um, there we go, we got some light. So, as you can tell, it's dark in here because it's, uh, what time is it? Grab my phone. 6 p.m. And it is January the 26th on a Saturday. Um, I'm not staying here tonight, though it sure looks like it. Um, I have been doing a ton at the tiny house, guys. Sorry, I haven't been filming any of it. But tiny house is in transition mode, so expect a ton of videos coming. Um, I can literally, I just have a walking path now through the tiny house. That's got to go. I got to go minimalist at the tiny house. And being a prepper and a minimalist at the same time, kind of tough. Very tough. So, I got to get rid of a ton of stuff, whether I sell it or whatever. I think I got to. Um, I'm getting rid of the totes, those giant plastic totes, uh, storage totes, out of the back storage room. I already took all the crap off the table back there and folded it up. And I have my mom uh, came over for a visit and she really liked my DVD cabinet. So it's gone. <laughs> So I gave it to her and then um, I do like the cabinets though I didn't think they had enough storage in them. So what happened was um, around the time that she took this cabinet she said well why don't you go get these other ones that are on sale for a hundred bucks a hit and they're a lot taller way more storage. So I did. I spent 200 bucks, got two of them. Same color as the smaller ones. She only wanted the one um, cam for storage cap pantry, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, things are a mess in here. So basically, I'm going to rearrange the storage room and um, I want the aquaponics to be underneath the window in there. Um, not that it's going to do anything for the aquaponics because I'm going to be using uh, grow lights, but I think that's a better position than in the corner by the batteries. It's just for, you know, I think that's going to be the better location. And then I'm going to have to hook up and build all these pantries and probably screw them to the tiny house walls um, permanently so they're not going anywhere. And massive, massive downsizing happening, guys. So stay tuned for that. Sorry I didn't do anything other than tell you what's going on today. But um, I have been working on my radiant heat system here on the wood stove. I got it to where I like it. And I'm, I'm kind of in the final stages. I've been working on this thing, putting a ton of hours into it. And... One thing I got to mention, guys, you know how I showed you I got all that tubing for free? Never do that. Ever. <laughs> if you're going to build one of these, go to the store and just buy a brand new roll. Because the, stuff, the headaches I've run into with this used crap, even though it was free, I had to put a ton of time in to unkink everything. And I did that with... Um, low budget I had I used what I have on hand in the tiny house always um, as much as possible I used uh, this uh, you guys probably can't see it it's just metal wire and what I did was I just wrapped it around the outside of the kinks of the tubing that were can all the spots that were kinked and made it a skeleton to make it unkinked so it stayed oval at least <laughs> So that took about two hours just doing that. And then I'm purging the lines yet again of air. Um, so what I got rigged up, I'll show you in, in a, a, a daytime video when I have light in here. Um, that, 
But I'm just letting my uh, wood stove die down. It's been running all day. And actually I put the propane stove on as well because it was so damn cold in here. I said, hell that, hell no, I'm not waiting for the wood stove. The wood stove takes three to four hours to heat the tiny hose up. And I was like, hell no, I'll be, I'll be uh, frozen by the time that happens. So um, I went whip that on I obviously started the wood stove first and I'm like uh yeah right this isn't gonna make it so I got the propane on it is actually 63.9 Fahrenheit inside 41% humidity uh, the outdoor temperature I cannot give you because I'm not putting batteries in just for this right at this moment um, the rechargeables do not like the cold. 17.7 uh, .7 Celsius for Europe in here. It's comfortable. Um, so, like I said, I'm just going to give you an update on this, uh, on what's going on. So, I'm going to shoot a video just on the Radiant Heat System. I'm going to shoot videos on, I'm actually not going to shoot videos of me getting rid of a bunch of crap. I'll just show you what happened after the fact because I know people love watching me just move stuff around the tiny house. That's not, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and it's official, guys. One of my off-grid solar batteries is now dead. Uh, the one that I got donated to by my, from my dad is dead. It lasted two years at the tiny house. But the thing is, it was about... I don't know guys we're talking seven years old so this thing is that thing is a beast it made it this far so um especially since I used it as a learning battery and drained it down a, a couple times way past its point that it pointed no return so that's not too bad now the blue one is still fine no big deal so I do have power at the tiny house Limited power, as you can tell from the lighting in here, but um, off-grid power nonetheless. Um, my, I did mention this, I think before, but I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't. I don't even remember if I did or not. Anyway, when in the springtime, God, I hope it comes soon. I'm gonna rip down the solar panels that are powering my tiny house right now um, at this moment not I'm not gonna go rip them down in the night at winter time no um, and then I'm gonna put the flat ones up that you guys saw me put up on that side of the trailer for the large battery bank which has still not come on sale yet which really sucks um, but the, I have an uh, email alert when they do come on, so that's kind of bonus. Because that's going to kill my bank account once that happens. Um, but in the meantime, the plan is, that goes away. Total revamp of the solar wall back there. And we're only going to be having one battery, the blue guy, back there. As well, I'm going to have all four solar panels going into the blue guy. Because right now... Two are powering the orange battery that's on its last legs, and two are on the blue one. So the blue guy's going to get all four. Also, I have all these quick charge USB components that are going to go back there to recharge all my little lithium power packs and any other devices that I want. That's a total revamp back there, plus the MPPT charge controller, 30 amp hours from Wish, cheaper than Amazon. Unbelievable. With the remote and everything. And it didn't look damaged or anything. I haven't tested it out yet, but it's here. And actually, I need to leave it here. Hold on a second, guys. Let me grab it. So, here, here she is. Poor lighting. MPPT solar charge controller, uh, EP Ever tracer. This is a 30 amp hour model, max PV voltage 100 volts. Uh, 
max PV input power, 390 watts, 12 volt. That's pretty much what that'll be because four solar panels, 400 watts, but you'll never see 400 watts normally. So yeah, this is, I expect this just for this to max it out. So like I say, outside, I'm gonna be running this in parallel like I am currently. No changes there. And with an MPPT charge controller, it's gonna help help my battery last longer, be more efficient in the winter months to get power, because you guys saw how piss bored my power was um, on some of the winter days. Almost non-existent power some days, which really downer. But this will this guy's gonna save my butt. Um, if you guys look this up on Wish, this is like this is the real deal, no no BS charge controller. This is what you want. And this is an awesome starter. Cheap, affordable, MPT cheap charge controller that's affordable. That is for sure. Now, fire still. That's a nice bed of coals. Now what, I won't go into this too much, but I, I've been putting a ton of work in over here. Now, update on my dad. Um... Okay, this is this is crazy. The cancer's gone due to the cannabis oil. However, because he had to go through six shots of chemo, um, he's not his white blood cell count. Like his last chemo shot was in September, October, November, December. January, February. Wait a minute. We still in January? Yeah, we are. And tail end of January. So, he's been off chemo for, what is that, three, four months? However, he's only getting side effects now from the chemo. What's that about? I don't know if it is for sure, but I think it is. I don't know. Um, he's had... And the, it's it's complicated because he has um, he's got dental issues where he needs a root canal done. The doctor says he can't go to the dentist because his white blood cell count is too low. So they gave him refrigerated medicine needle shots that he puts in himself, which is in his belly, um, two inches diameter around two inches from his the diameter of his uh, belly button and the needles are the syringes are kind of cool because he puts them in he pushes in the medicine and then you push again once and it sucks the needle into the syringe and then that's it and the needles are quite Time, like quite thin like he doesn't need you don't even bleed when you do it I, I seen him do it but he my dad's in rough shape with the low blood count so because he's fighting pain from the dental work or the that the teeth that need fixing and he can't go there because of the blood count so what the doctor's doing we explained it to her and everything we're like okay so we got to get the blood count up somehow and I read online um, a lot of vitamin C and I'm giving them kale and spinach and vitamin C smoothies in my Nutra, Nutra Bullet, which is working good. Though, you guys can probably tell I'm not losing much weight, but some. Um, just checking on things here, guys. Um, I put a... Okay, so... Other than that, I'm keeping my dad comfortable. He's not on any cannabis right now because we want his blood cells to come up. I don't know if cannabis drops white blood cells. I really doubt it. Um, but I the what I've been what I figured out is the white blood cell count is low because you have an infection of some kind somewhere. So we're guessing obviously in his mouth that he needs dental work. So it's a catch-22. We can't go in and, f or the dentist can't go in and fix what's going on up here until his blood counts up. But then 
this is causing his white blood count because it's probably infected to drop and stay low so it's like what the hell is going on like you're it's I don't know I'm no doctor whatever but um, so I'm just keeping him comfortable he's got two more shots to do he's had a total of well he's got a total of six to take so he's only got two left and then he's also has to go to the local uh, blood uh, lab here to get his blood checked to see what his levels are and the doctor um, has been calling to let him know if he can or cannot do anything yet so hopefully that that helps out so prayers thoughts good vibes send them our way guys for sure because actually once his white blood cells come up he'll be back to normal guys so um it's just this guys if you know if a friend or family member that has that has is diagnosed with cancer get them on cannabis oil 60 grams indica 20% THC plus minimum. Get it on. Get it on. Get them on it. Forget the chemo. Forget the radiation. No side effects whatsoever. And if there is a side effect, maybe you get a little. Mun you get the munchies. It helps you sleep. Big deal. What what kind of side effects are those? That's like after a big meal or something. You get that other than the munchie part because you're bloated <laughs> but uh yeah so anyway whatever so yeah like i said guys chemo nasty crap they're poisoning the public and oh i forgot to tell you guys you'll like this um at christmas time relatives are over I got to meet my, I don't know what, she's a, I'm her nephew, so she must be, she's an aunt then, right? My aunt's husband, they both, the two of them live in the USA. They live in, they lived in Florida, now they're moving to Atlantic, Atlanta. Oh, walking dead. Um, anyway, her husband terminal cancer has had all the treatments in the world in the US radiation surgery chemo the doctors will not touch him again he can barely talk because his face is so thin and they cut so much crap out of, I guess that he had a throat or a neck cancer or something like that okay listen to this stuff guys so the doctors said we can't do anything for you you're terminal all we can prescribe you is pain pills. He didn't want to do that. So he comes and sees me at Christmas time. I give him a jar of cannabis oil, Rick Simpson oil, and I tell him how to take it. So a month later, I talked to him over Facebook because I had Adam and all that stuff. He tells me, because he st he also has to go in, like my dad, to get shots. Where, well, my dad does it himself, but do, uh, he has to go in, get sh get a shot for his white blood, what white blood cell count to get boosted up as well. From, again, the chemo treatments and crap they've been giving him. But, when they did that, they also checked him out in the States on how his cancer is doing one month later after taking the cannabis oil Rick Simpson oil three times a day guess what happened his cancer both of I guess he had two it cut in half he's getting zero treatment from the modern medical system and I give him a plant concentrate and the cancers cut in half the doctors don't know what the hell's going on. I know what the hell's going on. But the doctors and the medical system is killing everybody. So anyway, he's coming back next month to see me again. To get more oil, of course, right? 
And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a sit down with them. I'm not gonna film it or anything, but I want to hear what happened. The whole I want to hear the whole story and how he's doing. But he's doing a hell of a lot better than what they provided. And we're talking USA, dude. In Canada, we don't pay for well. We pay for medical. We pay for our health care in taxes, but we don't go to a hospital and get a bill. That's not how it works. Like unlike the states. So, in the states where you guys are charging, well, if, if, if we had the same system here, we'd be charged to the hilt too, but we don't. But anyway, I'm going to find out from him. Um, like, he's, he was getting the best health care in the world, and they couldn't do anything for him. They cut him. He's basically, he was borderline not able to speak because they cut him up so many times in the throat. And, oh... And he, all he can do now for food is drink vitamin drinks like Ensure or Boost. That's how he eats for the rest of his life. Sound like something appetizing to you guys? No wonder he's so thin because you get sick of drinking that stuff after a while. That is ridiculous, guys. How am I doing this? Oh, I got a cell phone call. Hold on. That was my dad, guys, just checking in. So, after being interrupted here, I'm just going to say this. Um, those of you on the fence about cannabis oil, even though even I was on the fence, but I was looking for a miracle for my dad. Found it. Pretty damn sure. Especially since um, the guy that I'm helping out, I'm not going to mention his name, uh is on zero treatments other than getting his white blood cell count boosted like my dad his cancer is going away on a plant concentrate called Rick Simpson oil cannabis oil so huge thank you to Rick Simpson and because it worked for my dad and people are gonna say well well he had chemo too so maybe it was a chemo well this guy is on nothing and taking it and it's knocking his cancer out because the doctors don't even want to touch this guy anymore because all they'll do is end up killing him so figure that out guys he's on zero other than the white blood cell booster that's it and I give him cannabis oil and boom he's he's snapping back like nothing and it's only been a month no side effects. He can still drive. He can still do everything. His appetite's probably more because of the because of the oil. Too bad he can't eat anything solid, as far as I can tell. That's what he told us. He's he's on liquid liquids for the rest of his life. So again, because of the medical system chopping his body up. Oh, I don't know, guys. If you got, if you got, if you know somebody with cancer, run as soon as you're diagnosed. Ask for a can, ask for medical marijuana. If they don't give you it, leave the doctor's office. Go find somebody who makes it or grow it yourself and get the hell on it. Um, I've made a video on YouTube of how to make this stuff. Roughly a pound is a pound of good bud is what you need to make the cancer cure batch um what else can i say go watch that video so i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna leave the pump running because i gotta get rid of this the air bubbles that are in the system right now and it's a pain 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 but I'm going to leave it overnight and hopefully these air bubbles get the hell out of this system so I can get no more crap going on. Oh, just by squeezing the line I fixed it. Okay, so the air just moved down 
and around and it will vent out here now. Awesome. That is sweet. Now, the other thing I gotta mention, which I didn't mention, this is gonna be a long video, what the hell. <laughs> um, I came in here and from the wood storage uh, pantry, I guess, um, to the top, with the tubing was frozen. Okay? Luckily, I used this flex flexible tubing, had nothing break from the ice or anything like that. Now, that's awesome. Now, um, I had to, that's another reason why I had to put on the propane stove and I had to remove my heat, heat sinks off the wood stove until that, until that frozen liquid water in there um, was unfrozen, then I put everything back on top of the wood stove as a radiator. So I'm, I'm gonna just see. Um, okay, the rest of the air is out of here, and can you say sweet? Because I sure can. Once most of the air is out of the system the stronger the push is in the throughout this whole system so that's pretty bad ass i gotta say now this project has been a nightmare but then again i'm doing everything on a deep budget and i don't know what the hell i'm doing <laughs> you guys know that right by now but i'm doing it on a budget and that's the way it is but it is working now the radi the rad over here next to the door, very nice and comfortably warm. I can set up a small fan to blow through it and that'll be sweet. Now I would like it hotter, so I'm possibly thinking about getting more of those aluminum bars, but I'm out of money. I really am for that. I've got to be super careful about spending because I want, um, you know, I want that big battery bank. I don't want to be buying a bunch of crap. Um, so there you go. So anyway, this video is way too long. I'm going to put it up anyway and uh, go from there. But I think um, things are looking good here, guys. Really good. Really happy with this. So I'm just going to let the pump run and hopefully this just gets rid of the air out of here and that'll be it. So we'll see you guys on the next one and obviously I got a ton of stuff to do here. Really I hate, I hate the winter time. You're stuck indoors, the weather sucks and you can't do anything outside at all. Especially what I'm planning. So, oh, I should mention, I did go up on the roof, not on, not me on the roof, no, no. I went up the ladder to look at the solar panels at the front of the roof. They're still fine, the flat ones that I put up. And they survived a lot of crap this winter, and uh, that's pretty sweet. So, like I said, springtime, a lot's going to be happening. Please hit the thumb up, the share button. Um, just thumb up every single one of my videos, even though if you, even if you don't watch it all the way, guys, that will help me out big time. Hopefully, my uh, subscribers do that. That's you. And big shout out to my Patreon members. They give me the ability to get little projects like this done because if I didn't have Patreon and only YouTube money, it's going to take me 20 years to do anything in the tiny house because of the amount YouTube has cut everybody's pay. It's ridiculous. So, like I say, I'm, I'm going to get all this stuff done and I'm also toying with the idea of a new channel totally different from the tiny house. Uh, nothing tiny house related in that video. It's going to be uh, conspiracy prepping, stuff like that. 
who knows I don't even know if it's gonna be on YouTube it may be on one of my uh, the, one of the blockchains that I'm on but uh, whatever so this guy's all shut down I gotta shut off the fans for the uh, yeah all the air is out of here now and that is sweet 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 I want to see what happens when I close this so nothing so I'm just gonna leave that closed and shut the pump off or actually turn that back on and shut the pump off oh Christ and see if any air comes back up some came up on this side A little bit. A little bit. There goes some air bubbles. Sometimes if you shut off the power to the pump, plug it back in. Yeah, there we go. It'll uh, unstick some of the bubbles, which is good. The less of layer bubbles I have in this project, the better. That's your main enemy for that. So I gotta get my coat on. Get the heck out of here. Um, I gotta go shut the propane tank off outside. Get rid of this ladder. And all that fun stuff. And I may just leave the pump running. It'll just help get rid of the air out of there. And that's a good thing. And it'll keep the water moving so I don't have uh, issues. Um, so there you go. Oh, pull these off. So a lot of changes coming from the tiny house, guys. Um, a lot of stuff that you haven't seen yet. What the hell? Oh, geez, the wood stove's still warm. I'm definitely leaving the pump on now because I don't need any melting going on. Man, that's... I love this wood stove. <laughs> That's awesome. That's been off for quite a while. Um, so, yeah. Just going to leave the pump going. Because I have to. And uh, that'll be the way it is. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, as more of the air bubbles leave the system through my opening here. In the opening... There's a funnel and it's filled with the uh, windshield washer fluid and that slowly as more space is at, uh, added when air leaves the tubing obviously it allows a little bit more of that liquid to get into the system. So pretty sweet and uh, I won't get into all that but whatever. So I'm going to leave the pump going. I'm out of here for now guys and it's pretty damn dark. You guys can't see anything. And nothing, none of my batteries are charged. Like uh, my, um, what do you call them? Lithium batteries, the power packs, are really charged. So downer, but that's the way it is. So we'll see you guys later. I got to get the heck out of here. I've been going too crazy here. And uh, hopefully I can see outside. But uh, that'll be it. I'm out of here. So we'll see you guys on the next one.